I got this amazing opportunity to get on a call with Vanil Velasquez, the voice of Zeri in League of Legends and Neon in Valorant. We called our discussion Two Sides of the Same Coin. We are both Filipino voice actors born, raised, and based in the Philippines, and we have a lot in common in our voice acting journeys. And yet, we are not so similar. Or maybe we are. My good friend Erwin Binatividad, another Filipino voice actor, was our host, and he asked us 20 voice acting career questions. We present to you two sides of the same coin. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hi Vanille. How, how are you guys doing? Hi, Erwin. Oh, yeah. Doing okay. nice. great. Super nice to see you both. So, uh, are you guys Glad ready for a discussion? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh. Let's do this. Okay, so let's start. Um, so guys, um, establishing a voiceover routine that works for you doesn't come easy. So what does a good voice acting day look like for you? You want to do that first or? Because I don't want you to overshadow how busy you are and I'm just like 90% lying down. <laughs> on my bed. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so I have acid reflux. And I don't always oh. eat right to prevent acid oh. reflux. So, but acid reflux is bad when it goes to your throat and messes up your vocals. So, I always record in the morning at around 9 a.m. I try to do that as much morning. as possible. I schedule all of my sessions in the morning. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of recording sessions with directors from the U.S. at seven in the morning for me, and they're like, "Are you sure you're okay with seven in the morning?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine with it." And they don't know that I'm already up by like five a.m. But <laughs> yeah, so that's how my that's how my day usually goes. I I record, I answer my emails in the morning, and I record in the morning. And sometimes that can go until noon. It depends on the day. Okay. Um, yeah, but you know, sometimes you can't avoid needing to schedule a session that's not in the morning. And can I, sometimes I do it right. in the evening or in the afternoon if I really have to, but I really try my best to have them in the morning. And then um, sometimes I go to the studio. I've been avoiding it since the pandemic began. <laughs> um, right yeah. now, I'm really I'm only cool. going to the studio for Riot Games because I you don't really turn down Riot Games. I don't know exactly. how exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you allowed what? to drink coffee? Because <laughs> you have GERD. <laughs> no, um, no. No. It's bad for acid re reflux, and I also get right. really bad palpitations when uh, I have caffeine. So yeah. yeah. Oh, and caffeine can dry your throat. It's not a good idea right. to have caffeine before you record. Oh, okay. But I still drink coffee. <laughs> I love it, coffee. I don't drink. It's very interesting because, uh, wait, oh, oh, is, is it okay if I. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, because a lot of the stuff you shared, I do the total opposite of that. Let's start <laughs> with you being an, uh, an early bird. I'm kind of like a night owl. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I set my recording sessions as much as possible at around three or four, three to four, or six to seven. Like those are my two blocks of time for the day that I generally like to schedule my voiceovers if I can schedule them. And yeah, I think a really exciting voiceover date for me would be if I were working live with a client from the US, the UK, wherever. And you know that we would just have very good rapport and that they would really draw out the best in me for, for some reason. Like, there were, there were roles that like, okay, I kind of get how this is done. I've been doing this for the past 10 years already. But there are certain roles where like, you really need some guidance and you would appreciate having a director and an engineer. Yeah. 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 And uh, the coffee thing, <laughs> the total opposite of that. I'm like, I need coffee before a recording session. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, all, all the time. And, and that's why I'm like, <laughs> all that energy. Um, yeah, you know, someone once called me hyper voice, Dave, and I'm like, what? But and kind of yeah. accurate, yeah. And, yeah, and you know, everyone's the, different. I guess it depends on how your body takes caffeine. Right. Yeah. And and the hot coffee it really helps me with my nasal congestion. So that's why I drink coffee first. So let's talk about uh, auditioning. What's your acting process like for an audition? Okay, I'll take this one. Um, mm -hmm. When there's an audition that's 
interesting enough, okay, like most of the time, there are tons of auditions that land in my inbox that I kind of filter out now. <laughs> um, I, I take the ones that I believe I have a very good chance of booking. But the moment mm. I see like authoritative senior, I'm like, that's not me. I, I don't go for yeah. it anymore nowadays. Yeah. I, I try to be selective about my battles, choosing my battles. Right. And when I do my actual audition for projects that I really, really, really like, I would spend, and I got this from Dave Finoy, legendary video game voice actor, Dave Finoy. I would read the script seven times total. So first three in my head, then three aloud. And usually the seventh time is a charm and it tends to be the best take. And of course there's gonna be some, I would first research the company and um, research the character if possible. Ooh. How about you, Vanu? So interesting how more organized your process is. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually it's my like first time hearing that from, um, <laughs> from Dave. That's why, okay, I do I'm, I'm the same well. thing, though, about mm. auditions. I do filter them. Um, I really rarely go for roles that I don't think I'd have a good chance of booking. And yeah. I also filter it by, do I even care about this character? Because a part of it is like, right. I want to be genuinely interested or passionate about the work that I'm a part of. So if I don't feel that necessarily, sometimes it I, it doesn't motivate me to audition. Because I feel True. like it's also a disservice to the creator. I feel like I have to share um, their passion in some way. That's just me. Um, but right. uh, yeah. I agree. Um, and, but about filtering based on, do I think I'm going to book this? Um, I always say for newer voice actors, go for as much as you can, because, um, when you're new, you don't really have a good gauge yet of which ones right. you're more likely to right. book. So in, in that case, just try everything. You never know. But as you get more experience, you will start to see a pattern right. there. And that doesn't yeah. mean that I don't go for roles that are usually outside of what I book. I still do sometimes. It depends. But um, that's generally how it is. Because, you know, your time is, uh, as you get, um, as you kind of, for a lack of a better term, level up in your profession, your time is more valuable. And, you know, like Dave said, you got to pick your battles and be wiser about what you spend your time on. Right. So, yeah. There. That, that is fun. But how do I prepare for an actual audition? Um, It depends. Depends. I don't really have an organized process. Sometimes I would see the audition. I'll just do it right then and there. Not a lot of thought. Sometimes I, if I really, if I'm really, really into it, I'll think about it more and really analyze what it says about the character. Do a little research. Find like look into the references that they mentioned. And sometimes, because sometimes when you have an audition, they will reference other characters that might right. that are kind of like similar to what they're going right. for Pegs. So i would research i would research right. that especially when it's when it's there because it's not always given to you so when it's given to you you should most definitely look into that and um yeah so it's it's not a it's not a solid process for me it really depends on kind of my jam of the day and it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it works you don't have to be organized and a quick <laughs> comment on that thing you said about um when you're new you try out everything mm -hmm. first because you, you don't have something to gauge mm -hmm. um i totally agree and when when you maybe when you've done voice acting for about a year maybe longer than that i would look back and see which is working for me the most mm -hmm. and some people might might call that being typecast like oh man all i get is you know i just get cast for all these teenager roles but <laughs> yeah that's a good thing because it means you found your niche in a sense that people have practically voted with their wallets to say you are doing excellently for that type of character that's true right i agree I, I, for me you should also know what your current situation and also your brand so that you know mm -hmm. yes. you know additionally exactly. will, will will be easier and of course, you'll be more efficient, I guess. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so every actor and actor actress uh, wa uh, want to book a job or get hired. So, for you guys, how do you find work? You want to take that, or <laughs> okay? Um, so the way that I a lot of people have asked me this already, it's a little complicated to explain. Um, okay, so for the 
I guess the majority of the auditions I get now are sent to me directly, either from talent pools or referrals. And it's less of going after public casting calls now, though I still do those, but mm. not as much anymore. Because, um, again, going for the which ones do I have a higher chance of booking? And when it's sent to you privately, you're competing with less people compared to a public casting call. So that's part of it. But also just the convenience. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so that's how I get most of my work. I would I would love to say that I get them from my agent, but I don't have an agent. And by the way, you don't need an agent to succeed in the start, but I it helps. <laughs> Dave, do you have do you have an agent, Dave? <laughs> I think you have. I have. I was. Hmm. I don't hmm. know. <laughs> I don't know the status of that one person who was supposedly my agent. So I will get back to you on that. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I just, just remember you sure. sharing me about him. Yeah, uh, so I guess for me, one thing that has really, really worked for me, um, though to a limited extent, is email, uh, rather cold emailing. And this is the part where you just send an email to someone. And I, 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 there was a time back in, I think it was it 2012, 2013, I was just scrolling through like the, the business listings on this website, um, freelance platform. And uh, it's gone now, yeah. But I was looking for video producers, and I basically said, hey, I'm a voice actor, check out my demo reel. And I just did it very, very roughly. And that got me some very solid repeat clients who've stayed with me through the years, which mm -hmm. is, I'm very, very, very grateful that they've been there since the beginning. And yeah, that, like, some of my best projects uh, I got through this process. So cold emailing, but... Um, word of caution, mm -hmm. I really would not spam people nowadays, including my demo reel in the first email, because, you know, they could think that that's a virus. Like, why am I going to open this from a stranger who just messaged me? How do I know you're actually a voice actor? Yeah, so, so that's one source. And really, some of the biggest projects are referrals. Referrals mm -hmm. and studios. Studios. So, like I mentioned that I treat voice acting as kind of like a garden. So you keep planting mm -hmm. seeds all over the place, build, build relationships, right. put up profiles on various platforms. And while you sleep, people are viewing these listings and you right. become visible and right. you eventually get work. Yeah. I just, I do want to add something though, that there are some differences in how things work depending on um the type of voiceover work that you're applying for like for example because dave does a lot of voiceover for um corporate stuff like companies and that's where in my i think his cold emailing works better but in but for a character voice actor like for animation and then video games <laughs> you can't just like email these video game studios asking for asking for them to listen to your demo reel most likely they're just gonna ignore you that's not really how it works so there is some dis some differences there but yeah true although there were certain studios that did say yes got on a call with me and became clients mm -hmm. so i guess it depends on really the depends type of, all right. yeah yeah it's complicated guess, it, it, yeah but i guess indie will tend to respond more but like the real big guys their auditions go through agencies and stuff so that is true they will probably not respond to you and most likely the cases that your person you're emailing isn't even in charge of casting <laughs> right but for, for me i love referrals because it means like you're already establishing your credibility so <laughs> so i love getting referrals uh yeah i also want to know uh how many times do you ad audition in a week in a week <laughs> you know like how many times I love do you count <laughs> Okay, okay, I, I must confess, um, as of late, as of 2022, maybe once or twice a week. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, because there will be a certain point where, where you get enough repeat clients that you know that if you take on a new one, that's right. going to be recurring profit, yes, but also recurring time lost. <laughs> and you only have 24 hours in a day, so... Depends yeah. on how much you sleep, though. 
How about you, Vanilla? <laughs> Do you steal audition? Do you steal audition? <laughs> yes! yes I'm sure. I don't think you ever stop auditioning, no matter how big of an actor you think you are. You're still gonna Yeah, be. right. But, um, yeah, more or less the same. Because, um, yeah, Davis, right, at some point you get repeat clients and... Um, I'm not saying this to brag, but you know, sometimes they, they don't like, they don't make you audition anymore. They just hand you the roles and stuff. So yeah, I don't audition as often as I would like. Maybe if I was a part of an agency and I was constantly getting these super, like a lot of auditions, then maybe, but since I don't, and I, yeah, I don't audition that often. Once, twice, once, twice. I see. Yeah. I don't really give myself a quota. I don't think <laughs> that's necessarily the best but um, well, that's no. just me. so so when you're working uh how many how many hours do you spend doing paid work i don't i'll go first i don't yeah actually do <laughs> unpaid work anymore maybe sometimes as a favor for a f very close friend i wouldn't even right. do it for a friend just a close friend <laughs> but um yeah most of my work now is paid work because you know like we've mentioned before our time is valuable now so um yeah, yeah maybe for something i'm really passionate about but it's it's not often that i still do work for unpaid work um so yeah how many hours do i spend you know it really depends on the project sometimes i would just i wouldn't even spend an hour sometimes Sometimes it's four hours, sometimes it's two hours, or just one hour. It really depends on the project. Uh, but, but in in a week, would you? How many hours cumul would accum accumulate in your est estimation? Mm, I'm not. Sh I guess it also depends on how busy that week is. Yeah, like next sure. week I have a four-hour session but i don't know what other stuff i'm gonna do the rest of the week this week i've spent maybe two hours i've, I've been taking it slow this week but yeah <laughs> yeah I, I would have to say that i'm about on this in the same situation as you i i don't know um for me a good voice acting week is maybe recording five hours total <laughs> throughout five the week hours. because mm -hmm. yeah it, it's not that it's um you know, there was a time that i was doing projects left and right maybe 20 30 hours a week that that was early on in my career but the strategy is to kind of uh, at least in my case in my case like I, I didn't have a lot of confidence to charge higher rates when i was a newbie but you know um if you have like a gvaa um, with with their rate guide and um, oh, what are some other great rate guides? You know, Vanil. Uh, if you're local to the Philippines, Vocal Alliance has a rate There's, guide. Vocal Alliance has a rate yeah. guide. Yes. Yeah, I use um, that. <laughs> for indie work, um, Voice Acting Club run by voice actress Kira Buckland also has an indie rate guide. So yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, maybe five hours and. You know that frees us so much time to do other things that we love to do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and i just want to add that yeah. um just because we're not working long hours doesn't mean that we're not working hard because um, as we progress in our career you know i keep saying this but our time gets more valuable right, and so right. our hour rate increases right. but that doesn't mean that we're doing less work you're paying for the work that we've put in in our, in our previous years to get for to years. this level of skill that we have now so. right yeah. and actually it stops being a per hour rate but it becomes a, a matter of scale economies of scale if you're doing a yeah. national commercial you're not being paid by the hour you're being paid by the number of viewers who are going to see that ad and for how for how many months that ad is going to be running so five hours might sound like a small amount of time for maybe employed people but for a voice actor, there's a lot you can do in five hours. That could be yeah. like yeah. 10 scripts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 10 scripts, so maybe 15 revisions, one really long project, three, three one and a half hour projects, maybe. Right. My math is wrong, but. For me, since since I'm a full time nurse, I only have like four to six hours a day for my <laughs> voiceover work. So, but that's the goal. Hopefully, 
in the future I, I can be mm -hmm. a full-time voiceover actor just like you guys um so you've mentioned um you guys are swamp with with work so i believe it's really important how you uh should spend your free time so yeah how do you spend your free time by the way I love this. Do you, do you have a free time? <laughs> I love this. I do the stupidest things in my free time. Like, I just tweeted that I, lately this week, I've just been, like, sleeping, listening uh -huh. to videos on YouTube. <laughs> But, you know, I can excuse this as, as kind of research, because, like, that's voiceover I'm listening to. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess one productive way for a voice actor to spend their free time is to watch stuff or if you're in video game play <laughs> video game because that's how you yeah. learn it's it's kind of learn you're kind of learning too because you're listening to their performances and right i'm not i'm exactly. i'm half kidding but it's true it does help oh yeah for sure for mm -hmm. sure yeah there, there was that one time that like uh I booked this commercial and it was it was basically like a Tom Kenny kind of Powerpuff Girls thing where you go like yeah. the city of Manila a fun filled <laughs> city except for traffic yeah I'm like I wouldn't have gotten that role if I wasn't watching Powerpuff Girls as a kid <laughs> yeah. things like that right um free time free time there's there's such a thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know we have Where's yeah, that? when you have when you have responsibilities uh, as a married man, especially you you, you have yeah. to think about it. Like, what it, what counts as free time? Um, well, that's fair because Dave is married and I'm not married. I have a lot more free time on my hands. Sure. Yeah, um, I have kids and <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so what I like to do? Uh, well, watch Netflix with my wife April. That's one of the things, of course. Um, spend quality time with my family when possible. Um, I usually like communicating and connecting with people I really value and cherish. Yeah, um, but wow. I actually don't watch watch stuff on my own anymore. Like whenever I watch something, I'm like, man, I could be watching this with someone and <laughs> turn it into a bonding moment rather than like just me absorbing media mm -hmm. but that's just me though mm -hmm. okay uh dave since you mentioned your your commercial i remember the first time i listened to your work and my first impression was oh god oh, uh, goodness this too uh they sounded like a native american so uh have you uh have you always had an american accent no and no. i just i just <laughs> also okay. want to clarify like feel like a lot of local filipinos think that some filipinos have this american accent but really when you listen carefully it sounds very much filipino it's like our filipino english way of speaking and if a native mm -hmm. american were to listen to it they could tell it's not an american speaking but um i guess we did kind of somehow got to the point where we can be in american media Like I did Jelly Ben and Pogo. It's a cartoon on PBS Kids in the United States, and um, um, yeah, I didn't always, I didn't always talk like this. I think it comes with practice, and also the media that I consume is very Americanized. Not proud of it, but that is how it is. <laughs> really not proud of it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree. I mean, um. In terms of the media you consume so mm -hmm. i guess i did i didn't always have the accent um, myself as well and um i would have to say that um it is like a 98 99% american accent based on the media that we consume mm -hmm. um when i was six years old my brother and i got together um lights went out because the power was out and at that time we were watching nickelodeon cartoon network mm -hmm. and we would role play in the dark using these character voices and we would do that for two decades <laughs> yeah all the way to college and we kept doing that and um but when i became a professional voice actor that was fine-tuned even more i i paid much more attention to things that i just no normally picked up um mm -hmm. it was still super helpful mm -hmm. to have you know miriam webster and to just double check how you pronounce things Mm -hmm. And yeah, I still went through um, a diagnostic test, and that was very, very helpful. And now I uh, coach and teach the American accent. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm there. <laughs> you, you have you have no idea like how many how many people want to learn you know, acquire the neutral at least the neutral American accent. Uh, how about Tagalog? Uh, what percentage of your projects are Tagalog? I wish I could say it's a lot. Honestly, the honestly getting to say Tagalog and Valorant is probably the most Tagalog work I've done all year. <laughs> I wish I could do more, but um, I I don't do a lot of commercial work, so right. that's why I don't I haven't done a lot of Tagalog work the past mm -hmm. year because the dubbing that I do, which is Tagalog, they do it in studios, and I haven't been to the studios in a while, so that's why I haven't done much Tagalog stuff lately. I wish I could, I wish I could do more. But yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I started out in with Tagalog as well, with dubbing um, in, in the big studios, uh -huh. same as you. Um, yeah. And now I think for all of my clientele, 30% of that work is probably Tagalog. Mm -hmm. And uh, guys, pay attention to how our accents kind of change when we mention the word Tagalog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Very um, important. Right. Don't, it's very don't important. butcher it when you say, say yes. Tagalog. Uh, yeah Tagalog yeah yeah um but maybe for the the commercial work that I get and the commercial work I'm super super grateful for that that's one of the things paying the bills mm -hmm. half half and half half English half Tagalog maybe some taglish thrown in there oh, yeah and my biggest project to date in terms of the time to effort ratio I'm not talking about the length of the project but like for the time that you put in and what you get for it, my biggest project in that regard was in Tagalog. Mm -hmm. So if you are a Filipino, guys, there is demand for Tagalog, just mentioning mm. it. Um, but it, 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 it helps to supplement it with a neutral American. Right. Yeah. Mine is like 80% Tagalog, So, but hopefully this year I, I wish I could get more English work. Um, how about in percentages? Yeah. <laughs> Roughly, how much work do you get in character, uh, commercials, and narration? Okay, I'll take this because this will be quick. <laughs> 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 yeah, my work is 90% character. My last commercial that I did is in character. I'm a character in the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I wish I could do more commercial work. I guess it's not my focus. I don't actively audition for commercial stuff because I know it's not my forte. So it goes back to the which projects do I have really? a higher chance of getting so that I can <laughs> not do more the character stuff. Okay. Especially because you know, there are a lot of veteran voice actors in the Philippines who are super experienced in the commercial space. And it's hard when you always have to compete with them. So I chose my own niche. I'm like, okay, they're not really here in this side of the voiceover world. So this is where True. I'm going to stay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is smart. That is very, very, very smart. Okay. would like to do more though. True. Yeah. yeah. For me, I think it's a... <laughs> I was about to say the same thing about the commercials. <laughs> the commercials that I book, I'm usually the character. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for me, maybe it's a 70, 20, 10, 70 characters, 20 commercial, 10 narration. But you know, I'm actually very interested in changing that ratio to maybe 40, 30, 30, or, or maybe, I don't know, much more of the just kind of talking stuff because e-learning narration, um, they're much more chill to record because I don't want to get nodes this early on in my career if i keep doing character work that requires you to go <laughs> it's just uh sooner or later uh i don't want to get notes oh okay so uh let's talk about personality traits uh are you uh are you an introvert or an extrovert <laughs> What do you think, Erwin? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think Dave is an introvert. I don't know. <laughs> I am an introvert? No, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So who, go, who, who wants to answer first? I want to totally know. Right. I'm not judging anyone, but <laughs> just want to know your answer. I know you got a hunch, but... Uh, what, so what, going right first now. betrays my personality type, so I'm going to sit down. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> No, Vanille, I want to I wanna get your answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm an introvert. I am very introvert. <laughs> I 
just either <laughs> pretend to be an introvert. But um, yeah, I guess that's a huge part of what I love about voice acting. Because I, mm-hmm. when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actress, you know, like a screen actress. And then I realized I can't because I have stage fright. <laughs> so then, <laughs> I mean, but also I just discovered acting before voice acting. But um, yeah, so when I found out that voice acting was a thing and I can act and nobody has to see me really, I thought I was like the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I take solace in how I, I, I'm for most of my job, I'm just in this box by myself with headphones especially since i do most of my work at home now and i don't i don't even get to see the engineers <laughs> not that i hate them they're cool people but <laughs> i feel very at home being by myself and yeah i'm an introvert and i think a lot of voice actors i know are introverts and we have the same reasons it's because of how solitary our job often is absolutely yeah. Which is I remember. Oh. ironic too, sorry. I just want to say that it's ironic because we do most of our work in isolation, but after we do it, it's broadcast to so many people. I just think that's a cool <laughs> juxtaposition. <laughs> Contrast, yeah. yeah. I remember Vanille during, during our first meeting in Bobo. <laughs> you were really quiet and like you were waiting for us to finish before you respond. <laughs> Then we were at, oh my God, Vanilla is our senpai. <laughs> She's the most experienced here. But yeah, but then gradually you're changing. I mean, like you're, I don't know, you're more talkative now, I guess. And I love it. <laughs> oh, it's a performance. I mean, part really? of it is, it's, um, I guess. It does? Around us? No, <laughs> no, but you know, because we're, we're recording this and it's going to be online. You know, there's a part of, I guess you kind of develop a persona. And this is how you this is how you are when you talk right. to people online or in real life but you know behind closed doors when i'm alone in my room i just want to sleep and not talk to anybody not that i hate people it's just this is how i relax because i'm an introvert that's how i get my energy you know i mm-hmm. like to recharge after i spend a lot of time with people <laughs> right true um I'm actually, I'm extroverted by virtue, only by virtue of initiative, by virtue of me reaching out to friends first, rather than them reaching out to me. But in terms of being in noisy environments or being in crowds versus like, like I prefer the setup of ours versus like being in a group of 30 people. <laughs> Absolutely. I like, um, I, I, I enjoy intimate genuine connection and i i believe a lot of the amazing things that happen in the world happen because of these kinds of conversations they become much more meaningful there's so much more substance to it and people are less constrained with societal rules so yeah it becomes much more heartfelt and genuine um but yeah <clears throat> between a coffee shop and a library Mm-hmm. I don't know though. Sometimes I would go. I, I would like to go to coffee shops. Oh, prior to the pandemic, I would mm-hmm. consider it like a co-working space. But it's so weird. Like nowadays, I still spend most of my time <laughs> alone in the studio at home, and I'm fine. I'm not bothered by it at all. Mm-hmm. Though I do have this uh, this program I keep using called Focusmate, which is like you're randomly assigned to a stranger from around the world and. You get on a call for 50 minutes and all you do is say hi this is what i'm gonna do for the next 50 minutes and you and they say their thing and you focus for the next 50 minutes and hey th- did you get your thing done and yeah so i do that every day now mm. Mm, okay. Interesting. so i'm never alone when i record voiceovers <laughs> i would like for for me i would like to think that i'm introvert because i really want to spend my time alone but now i guess because <laughs> especially during the pandemic I gained more friends. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? But wow. But yeah. So now we, I get to practice with more people, and uh, yeah, I think, like, I mean, it really helps me out because you know, I'm, I'm far away from my family, so this is very therapeutic. I'm voice acting is really therapeutic in in my situation. Uh-huh. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what do you do uh, similarly? 
Hmm. What yeah. do we do similarly? similarly. <laughs> well, I don't know about do similarly, but we had similar backgrounds. We both uh -huh. joined the Dubbing Academy. And I'm season three, she's season four, but we both joined that. We both started with the Gallo voice acting. I feel like this is a bigger gap. Was there? I'm not or, or, sure six and I am maybe five or six. Re, re five? Just, okay. Really I'm not, okay, fine. Maybe you were yeah. five. Season okay. five, I think. That was season three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, things we, we do similarly. What do we do similarly? That's a really good question. Such a general question. What do we Maybe. do similarly? We both <laughs> we, voice act. We both okay. voice act. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the end of it. That's well, it. I think okay. what. Based on what I've heard so far, it's uh, we're we're much more careful with our time now. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, one, that's you're right. Thing. That is something we always would really go back to in our answers: the time thing. The time and oh, you want to oh, quickly talk about that contest you won at some point? Mm, yeah, please. <laughs> how we how sure. segue into that though? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know how did we do that. <laughs> okay, okay, because I was gonna mention that as we both joined it, and like this is what happened. Oh, to me. Ah. I didn't get the connection to say. Okay, okay yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's why I mentioned it. Like you're gonna say, oh, well, it flew me to the states and stuff, and I'm like, it grounded me in the Philippines. I that's think what it's I'm. It's my say. first time hearing about it. That's why. Okay, please do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, so. Um... Do you want to talk about that one contest you won at some point? Yeah, uh, okay, so I think it was 2018 I oh. won this contest on the internet. It was called Now Voiceless, and it was open to aspiring voice actors all over the world, basically, anywhere you are. And yeah, I won that, and then they flew me to LA, and it was pretty cool. Awesome. Really? And you got like an autograph too, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. Awesome. Um, well, for me, the oh way. Oh my uh... God, wait. Pause. What? I never sent you that autograph. I got it for <laughs> you. It's, been... it's okay. It's okay. It's... <laughs> Todd Habercorn. Not too drag, Neil. I got a fire in my belly. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can include this in the oh bloopers or something. Right. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> okay. You want to... Wait. Where do we pick up? Uh, <laughs> would, would we go okay. through your thing again, or... I thought you were going to share your, your, okay, I do it your story. Sorry. Just realized. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, it was in 2018, I joined a contest on the internet called Now Voiceless. It was basically a voice acting contest open to anyone, anywhere in the world. And I somehow ended up winning it. And they flew me to LA and all that. And it was cool. Yeah. And, and you even got an autograph from Todd Habercorn, I think. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. did! <laughs> awesome awesome yeah and, and and i i believe i i believe i i joined the same contest and it i got something else from the contest so i didn't quite win i got into the highlight reels and mm -hmm. that had me thinking so it flew vanille to the states but it grounded me in the philippines that that's when i was like you know what i can't make a living playing the lottery you know, there can only be one, two, three people who win these contests at a massive scale. And that was a reminder to me about the open cattle calls when there were like five, when there were these auditions that were 500 people audition. Mm -hmm. I cannot live doing things like that all the time. So I thought, you know what, I got to start being smart from this point on. And that's when I really started to bloom where I was planted and focus on the community here in the Philippines as well. But now we're we're working on the international community too. Yay. Guys, yes. that was such a beautiful metaphorical way of putting it. That's so nice. Um yeah. Yeah, that was wow. nice. You know, but the funny thing is that 
in the beginning i also thought like that was the end goal like this is what we need to do you gotta be in la this is where they're all the, this right. is where they're doing all the big voiceover stuff but then exactly i did i'm not even there and i'm in riot games games that's redundant but yeah so um <laughs> it was kind of it's a game changer i'm not trying to put myself on a I'm not going, trying to lift my own banco if you're a Filipino and you get me, but like, <laughs> I'm not saying that I, I'm lifting this, but um, the I think that this has open doors for people who are yeah. local. Right. No, no, uh, exactly. Uh, we, we've had these conversations many times like, hey, you want to be like the Leia Salonga, the, the, the voice yeah. acting community? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. No, don't deny it. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> Staying on record. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a dream. Um I had a similar dream and mm -hmm. no. Um before I met my wife. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my, my goal was to fly to the states, but uh -huh. um, you know, she kind of kept me here in the Philippines so <laughs> yeah and I'm like you know what um I think why well, go to LA when you can bring LA here and so <laughs> and so um I'm not quite in LA but I'm pretty right. happy with like working for 39 percent of the world's countries at this point in my career so I'm pretty happy about that from one from the Philippines, from the Philippines, yeah. from the Philippines. <laughs> as long as we got like a stable internet connection and we meet industry standards in terms of acting and and gear and experience, we're good. Mm -hmm. We're Gucci. Wow. That's the life. Your voice has traveled <laughs> to more countries than you physically have. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. My voice has traveled. Ah, I, I can imagine my my voice like being this like electric spark thing traveling telephone wires <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well, for me i was thinking maybe i should participate more in the in those vo contests or some events i mean that's, go for that's it cool. actually i pr partici participated yeah, yeah one yeah. last year and i didn't win but actually it was really fun and i think it's good way for me to promote myself because now my friends they know that i'm doing voiceover so oh you're doing that that's your voice okay so i think it's a still a huge win for me so awesome, <laughs> uh, <man>. <laughs> thanks so. these oh, contests oh. they're a great way to make connections they and it's not necessarily with big people in the right. industry but it's people who are just like you but these people are the same people who are eventually also going to be as su successful right. so it's, it's a great way to make friends connections right. and it's connections, yeah. but it, you know, it feels like a dirty word like you're yeah yeah like not connection, connections no, it's not that. It's, it's <laughs> oh that that, that kind of reminds me <laughs> network yeah at, 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 at some point you were all like who needs connections i got skills i can't yeah. imagine people saying that i probably said that but you know, I didn't know a lot about the industry at the time. I was a stupid kid. But um, who wasn't? Yeah, connections are yeah. really important. And like I have said, it's not about just hitting random people up and asking them for a referral. Right. That's not it. Even people that I'm close to, I'm very shy about asking for a referral because it, it, right. it to actors it can kind of feel icky if it's not done right. properly. It can feel right. like you're just trying to get. You're just trying to use us as a stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. It's not that. It's just, you know, just make good friends and people will refer you of their own accord. Usually yeah. that's how it's exactly for me because people see that, oh, you're really good. And mm -hmm. I, I, I know you and I know you're reliable. So then they will refer you and you don't even have to ask. <laughs> right. I completely agree. Um, and between yeah. being famous and being reputable, I would always pick the latter. Reputable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so, me, yeah. I should, sorry. I, I mean, because I'm a nurse, and like, and my friends, they, when they 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 were really surprised hearing my where I work, and like, and it's amazing uh, receiving receiving kind words from them. Like, oh, 
you're doing this you can grow up pretty well and you're like so <laughs> so that's why okay this really inspires me so it's motiv- it motivates me to you know do this uh, wow. so that's good that's, to know that, that, that's really love working with Dave so that's why I decided to <laughs> to, to, to work with Dave and uh, take awesome. this, uh, this program so yeah I sorry I mentioned that one <laughs> no that's okay that's totally okay <laughs> yeah so guys if you'd like coaching anyway Um, yeah. No, no. So, but seriously, <laughs> no, no. Guys, uh, if you love but, but seriously, um, it, the word connections. I, I like to change that now instead of like using the noun form connections because like turning the relationship into an object. You know, I would prefer the connecting as a verb. Right. Mm-hmm. That's just me though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I have this question, guys. Um, uh, this actors' unions in the U.S. They're, they're they're helping. Uh, they're they help working actors uh, negotiate contracts and establish uh, fair pay rates and access health benefits. Uh, do you have um, any plans of, uh, or do you want to join the actors union? In the U.S., um, eventually, maybe. I'm oh. still like at the moment. I'm not super set in stone about my future plans am i staying okay. here am i moving for good or I, it, it's still all up in the air for me if i do end up moving yes because mm-hmm. uh it's it's kind of there comes a point where it becomes necessary unfortunately because um like in the u.s the big projects like if you want to be in disney and all that stuff they are union projects and they only uh, hire actors who are in the union so it becomes a necessity at some point right. if you're there um on the other hand do i wish there was a union in the philippines for voice actors i kind of do like because this whole low low balling rates thing is pretty <laughs> prevalent especially online and It would be yeah. nice if we had one. Vocalize is doing its part. It's great, although they don't have that much power because they're not a union. But they are doing the best they can. I'm so grateful for them. But sometimes I still wish we had a union. <laughs> gotcha. For me though, um, I think it would be a nice to have later in my career if it happens. You know, it's just one of those icing on the cake kinds of things. Um, I'm just gonna do what I do because for me it's really valuable to spend time with family, do things that are important to me, for people that I love, and even focus on the voice acting community in the Philippines as well. And I feel like that's kind of like where I'm needed. I remember there was a time that, um, you know, while, while I was courting my mm-hmm. wife, uh, mm-hmm. she, she's pretty darn <laughs> good with, with table tennis. I um, worked with the university table tennis coach um, in the University of the Philippines here in Los Banos, and and she was gonna teach me to become really awesome so I could like play ping pong with my wife. <laughs> yeah, and I mentioned this because I was like at that time I was very um, climb the ladder focused in the sense that I'm like, hey, um, you coach, uh, ma'am, but do you? still ever want to join these contests and she's like i mean yeah it, ping pong is, is fun but like now i'm really more of a coach and i enjoy this a lot and i'm like at, at first i was like that's kind of sad does that mean the fire will go away so it had me thinking a bit mm-hmm. but now i'm like you know what i i still do enjoy voice acting and i also enjoy co- coaching and and um, building the community and contributing here Um, but I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Right. Why not do both? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I also just want to share yes. that um, I used to be actually maybe just a month before I got the audition for Neon and Zeri. I was feeling really frustrated and I couldn't bear scrolling through my Twitter feed. Because I keep seeing these pe- peers, like people that I used to um, do hobby work with, do voice acting with for fun. Oh, I feel you. I see right. them; they're thriving It's and they're coming. getting on these 
franchises <laughs> that I could only dream of. And it was getting to me like, oh, this is so not fair because these opportunities, they're not open to me because I'm not in the United States and all that stuff. So I was really getting really frustrated about that. But then after all, everything that happened, it kind of, it made me realize that we do all want to have our own time and mm -hmm. we all have our own purpose. It kind of, I'm not really, I'm not usually a per person who's like, I found my purpose, but I found my purpose. It was like a wake up call to me. And it told me that didn't happen to you because you have a different purpose. Maybe you're meant to stay here and show mm -hmm. people that this is a route that they can take. And I sound so dramatic, but I really felt that. I felt <laughs> that too, it. and I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt that. How about you, Dave? Do you have plans to go to the United States or like, I just want like, to know. I had, you know, but like I you said, had, um, uh -huh. you know, if oh. maybe um, Disney comes knocking on my inbox, I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. But, you know, like if and if, wishful thinking. We don't say right. no to Disney. Mm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh name. and i i'm engaged so like i most likely am going to move if not for work <laughs> best wishes yeah, to throw that in there <laughs> yeah congratulations <laughs> okay i really love seeing your emotions when i love seeing your face when you're uh sharing about voice acting so why do you re why do you love voice acting Oh, no, at first, <laughs> such a simple question, but a hard one to answer. Um, right. I guess, you know, I, I guess I love how I can express myself in it. But at the same time, I also love how it touches people. Um, you know, especially after Valorant and Neon. I think I've gotten so many messages from people who were like, um thanking me for my work because it's inspired them it's helped them feel seen they're so happy that she talks like they talk as a filipino and um it's 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 i guess it's that um i guess if i have if it have to if i have to just pick one of the many reasons why i love voice acting i think it's that it, it's it touches people it, it inspires people how about you, Dave? That's not fair because my reason was kind of going to be kind of like that. And I've now switched over to my Deku impression because I yeah. love My Hero Academia. So just putting that out there. So, no. um, yeah, one of the reasons that I love voice acting is because um, a, a lot of people, uh, I understand them better when I put myself in their shoes. So. When I do impressions, I'm I'm actually really learning a lot about these characters, and I learn about people, and I learn about life, and and yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I just want to share because uh, uh, I came from a traditional household where, like, okay, you need to study study hard you need to graduate and get good grades <laughs> you need to you need to become a nurse so you can go to <laughs> greener pasture you get um so um because of that um i had to like ignore like the creative my creative side so and oh, now yeah. and because of the pandemic like <laughs> i have all the time in the world like okay what, what, should I, what should i do with my time and then there um I discovered I discovered voice acting and it really I don't know it uh, helps me to I don't know I found a different side of myself I discovered something and then just like vanilla I was able to express myself more and I gained confidence and I gained more friends I gained more friends <laughs> so that's why um, yeah and I, I told you it, this is really therapeutic for me that's why I love voice acting so yeah I'm just yeah. share my <laughs> my story. Thank you for and, sharing, Erwin. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. another thing that's really great about voice acting. It has virtually no limitations. Yeah. You can be how, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young exactly. you are. Yeah, Al Ali E. Carvalho was, I think, 14 when she booked Moana. Yeah, I, I could be wrong for the about the age, but you get the idea. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I I literally did this experiment where I left my diploma in the university I graduated from for three years to see if I would need it urgently for anything. But really, I'm I'm not saying don't graduate. Like guys, if that's something you're already doing, please please go for it. Um, if that's important to you and your family, but I'm just saying, it worked out even without it. So, same here. Right. My diploma was like, I don't even know where I put it. It's stored somewhere in here. <laughs> right. It's a very okay. accessible community. Uh, uh, industry rather. Right. Okay. For me, I, I think it came to a point like where where uh, when uh, where I realized that. What if my my kids will ask me, Dad, what are you good at? <laughs> what else can you do? Oh my God, I, I don't I don't have any skills. I'm I'm just an I'm a nurse. I, I mean that's it. I I forgot I, before when I was young. I I I like to draw, but now I for, totally forgot about it. That's why. Okay, <laughs> this pandemic, uh, this period, uh, this since I have a pe- uh, free time, I need to develop other skills for my kids, <laughs> and. Now I'm doing voice acting and I love it. Um, I just, I just want to know why do you voice act? By yeah, why do you voice act? Okay, uh, wait. Before that, I think uh, just a quick intermission. Uh, I, I just want to clarify that you don't again have to choose between a traditional career and voice acting because um, a good friend, Raven Lirio, um, yeah. she is a med student. Not sure how far she is with that route, but she's also a voice actor, so she does right. both. It's just yes. a matter of time management if you want to do both. Yes, yes. Right. And if you're local to the Philippines, I know a professional dubber who is a full-time lawyer. One of the busiest professions ever, and he pulled right. it off. So there there's you go. A, there's a way. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so why do we? The question again? Yeah, why do you voice <laughs> act? The first place. <laughs> How do I make it different from the first? For the earlier <laughs> question, um, I should have saved my inspire people <laughs> answer for this. <laughs> um. Honestly, and this is this is just me honestly answering this, not thinking of should I how how to sound good, but um, mm-hmm. it's all I know how to do at this point. Mm-hmm. I've I've dedicated so much of my life to it now that I don't know what I what else I would be doing if I wasn't doing this wholeheartedly. Honestly, I really don't know. So that's why I do voice acting, and it's it, also yeah what I said earlier. Kind of like, like, you, you, people, you, you, because it's who you are, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, why why does a fish swim? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's no, no. It's funny, is that it? Because it's true. I, I turned right. voice actor into like a personality trait when I was a teenager. <laughs> It was like yeah. the one thing that people knew about me. Oh, you know, she does voice acting online and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's such a good part of me now. I can't let it go. Yeah, and I guess with being a voice actor, it just comes with so much. You're you're a creative. You're a storyteller. Um, you're you're also a technical person. So there, there's a lot that comes with it, and there are so many implications. I guess for me, it's a and a not in a, any particular order, but um, maybe. This isn't for everyone, but um, if I were to be t- truly 100% transparent, it's uh, I do it for Jesus, family, and community. And um, you know, it's like not like in that order, but with Jesus at the center of everything, and like creeping into other areas of my life. And I'm compelled to use voice acting. It sounds dirty. Use voice acting. I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, be a voice actor and to use it as my avenue to really help Your people mm-hmm. yeah as an instrument there we go to to reach out to people and and help and that's why i'm so grateful that we get to do what we do right um as a voice actor as well um just having that capacity to uh, with voice actors at home our goal is to help 
10,000 Filipinos have job replacing income by 2025. Wow. So that is the goal. And especially during this global pandemic, I think that's, right. that's very, very relevant. Um, I, I was fortunate that um, when things were happening to me and my family, like four of them had COVID, got rushed yeah. to the hospital and stuff. Um, the community just showed so much love and including the voice acting community. And um, I'm just infinitely grateful for it. And I, I would like to be able to move pa to pay it forward forward yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay that's so nice yeah <laughs> i'm touched <laughs> uh, dave, uh, yeah, yeah me too <laughs> actually uh dave you you mentioned about some technical <laughs> skills um what other skills have you developed as a uh, voice actor i think there are so many um ah. first you learn how to be a, a janitor you got to clean your studio <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, number one, <laughs> audio engineering, marketing, uh -huh. uh, sales, customer support, um, all of the functions of a traditional business, except it's all you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, for me personally, I've really? also, I've, I'm, I'm, I guess I can call myself a professional writer in some way because I've written books for dubbing. Which right. I wouldn't have gone into if I wasn't voice acting. So same here. One and um, yeah, you know everything that Dave was Dave said was spot on. You kind of do almost everything as a voice mm -hmm. actor, especially when um, you work from home. Because in the studio, you got people who will engineer for you and direct you and stuff. But when you work at home, you you do most of everything, right. if not everything. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I, I got this view that everything is interconnected. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you think you have your fitness life, you have your financial life and you know, your, your mental health. And sometimes you think, oh, if I take care of my mental health, then my business will suffer because I'm putting time away from it by taking a break. But no, I don't see it that way. Um, there is a chain reaction when you do things. So mm -hmm. um, some people think, oh, you're, you're so mm -hmm. scatterbrained and unfocused. Why can't you do just one thing? But that's not how I see it. Um, I've been doing live streams for certain Facebook groups at some point. And the way I see that is that and some people might be like, oh, that's not voice acting. But for me, it's like, well, it's certainly a kind of improv, right? Mm -hmm. And because streaming is kind of connected to YouTube, it's also really helping me develop like my on-camera presence as well. Yes. So, and you develop your speaking skills. Your speaking right. skills. Yeah. If it involves speaking, it helps with voice acting. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. I, w I also wanted to learn those skills because right now I'm just focusing on my voice acting skills. But when it comes to managing my my business, like marketing and customer service and <laughs> other stuff, okay, I need Dave. You need to help me. <laughs> sure thing, man. Sure thing. Right. Okay. So, um, how uh, uh, was it? Uh, how has your acting grown through the years? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Because <laughs> I started really, really young, knowing nothing. Although at the time I was just doing it for fun, but I did. Mm -hmm. I knew zero about acting, not even just voice acting, just acting in general. Zero. I knew nothing, so I was really, really bad. So I would say, mm -hmm. having said that, that I've grown a lot. <laughs> as an actor <laughs> yeah you know my route I, I also want to share that you know my route my journey as an actor is very i would say it's kind of non-traditional yeah i don't have formal acting training right i, still don't. I want to i want to get into that as soon as possible but um because uh, for me growing up i didn't want to ask my parents to you know pay for acting classes and right. all that stuff i you know we're not we're not about rich so i didn't want to pressure them into that i guess so i tried to learn and train myself as much as i could but you know right. proper formal training is important taking workshops acting classes that is very important but if very, you can't afford it important. there is a way although it will take longer it took me like a right. decade or more <laughs> to be competent so it's gonna take right. a longer time without um proper training but it's yes. not impossible true 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 
true that. I guess in my case, it, it, I a lot. <laughs> Again, a lot. I mean, when, when we were in elementary school, I, I was like an overconfident kid who kept doing these role plays in school. Mm -hmm. But by the time I did, I joined my first college theater play or musical. I was horrible. Um, my director described me as a rock. But now I'm like <gasps> the rock. No, I'm the rock. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no, no! I wish. Yeah, come on. We're, we're, we're... No. Where are you guys? <laughs> but, but no, uh, ser seriously though, like, um, it was super important for me to go through my. Um, well, I, I became a voice actor first with Dubbing Academy back in 2012, and there I realized that I was learning from a generation of people who were theater actors and film actors yeah. foremost. And there was this emerging field of voice acting. I'm like, where do I learn about voice acting? That that was the only avenue there was. Mm -hmm. And um, and I thought, well, they they studied theater. Maybe I should take up theater as my major in college. So that's what I did. And when I was there, it was so different from what I was expecting from voice acting. It required, you know, head to toe, a full body mm -hmm. concentration. And you'd be surprised how your facial expressions and your your physicality yeah. really affects right. your emotions. You're right. It, it's super important. Gesticulate. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, aside from um, proper, I mean, formal training, I mean, practicing with your friends really, I mean, practicing with my friends really helped me a lot with you know, <laughs> getting feedback also because, you know, they're your mirror. So, um, in this journey, it's really hard to, you know, go alone. So you really True. need to okay. to know your, what, your mistakes, your flaws, and then, you know, learn from it. And uh, when it comes to uh, formal training, I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, how many? <laughs> it really helped me a lot. Like, I took five, I guess. I'm not going to mention them anymore. You might have but had more training than we've had. <laughs> yeah. Like, like last yeah, year. See, that's why your improvement has been I, so fast. Yeah. Because I consider myself as a uh, slow learner. So, like, um... nah, get that out of your vocabulary. <laughs> no, nah. don't really? say that. <laughs> no, but I but was last... in your first Volvo group. I saw your growth. I saw <laughs> it. I witnessed it. <laughs> I was like exactly. this emotionless guy who was just reading the script. <laughs> but uh, I mean. Though I think five or six uh, workshop, I those were really helpful, and um, I'm just glad that I took those uh, the courses, the workshop. Because last year that was my goal, just to focus on my voice acting. Because <laughs> one of the uh, coaches, they, he told me that I'm I'm not believable. <laughs> I was just telling my name. <laughs> I'm an Amy Zerman, and I don't believe you that you're. <laughs> <laughs> you heard something like that. Mm, that's a anyway. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to, I need to work on my my acting skills. That's why I even took uh, a course dedicated for for acting only. So anyway, so guys, you <laughs> take proper a uh, formal training and coaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Erwin is doing all the right things that Vanil and I didn't have starting out. We only didn't go through those because it um, proper training wasn't available to us st starting out. The, the internet yeah. is completely different now, and right. but I guess for us, um, it's not that we were like geniuses who figured things out. Um, <laughs> well, for me, um, the main source of my acting experiences, I, I would say, is like my actual professional projects with directors. The feedback that directors yeah. would give mm -hmm. constantly, that's mm -hmm. what built me through the years. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Because right. what, what happens there is they, they, when you fix all of the things that are going wrong, then you become a really smooth performer. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I True. agree. I think a huge part of where I am now is because of other directors that I got to work with and mm -hmm. I learned something from each and every one of them yeah i agree right. yeah and, and also what you said about how uh, how more accessible voiceover classes are these days compared to a before yeah before you you, you barely saw any online and you you any weren't really legitimate worried. ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so that was part of the struggle back then but it, 
people looking to get into voice acting these days are very lucky because a lot of things are available online now, especially、right. since the pandemic. Acting、yes. class, voice acting classes that used to just be open to locals in the states are now、right. open to anyone because they're online. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's more accessible now.、Uh, let's let's talk about achievements.、Um, Uh, what accomplishment in voice acting are you most proud of? Too many to mention. <laughs> One, two. I want to go first so I can have ideas. <laughs> I'm gonna give top ten. <laughs> top, top okay. 10. Well, <laughs> for me, it's not any one project, and it, the question is like voice acting achievement. For me, it's not、mm-hmm. even a role anymore.、Um, roles are nice to have. Right. For me, it's just the fulfillment of seeing my my students and demo reel clients really get farther with the kind of relationship that we have.、Um, Being involved in a community like Vocal Lions, and you know, getting people aboard for、um, this accent training class that Eliza Jane Schneider and I have put together, like finally it's here. There's an American a neutral American accent class happening in the Philippines,、right. and、um, I was fortunate enough to be part of, one of the people to help make it possible. And so, just having an impact on the local industry.、Um, It's very, very fulfilling, and I want to keep doing it. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have let you go first. Now I'm like, well, what do I say? <laughs> <now?"> <laughs> oh, no, you can、I'm... say the same thing with a different flavor. You have a different, yeah. you know, how. Yeah, I have my how. You have your how. Serious, like.、Mm. <laughs> I guess, I guess the reason why this is hard for me to answer is because I feel like. There's still so much that I can do, and there are things that I want to do this year specifically to really give back to my voiceover community and you know help other aspiring voice actors who are here in the Philippines, you know, become one of us, get get on this journey with us、right. because not a lot of people know how to do it, and you know. I know this information. I want to share it with people, and yeah, that's one thing that I hope to accomplish this year and the next year. You can ask me again, and then this, that's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a good one. <laughs> but, but I gotta say, Dave、uh, Vanille,、uh, you really inspire me. You motivate me to to be better. I mean, like I'm super. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be more <laughs> dramatic here. But I just want to. I just want to say that、uh, I'm super blessed to、uh, met you guys. It's、uh, really like I have no. I have zero background when it comes to、uh, voice、uh, voice acting. I'm just glad that you you guys were there. You're here <laughs> and still helping, even though you're you're really busy. Like、uh, just. just Just wanna mention that. <laughs> okay, so、um, so what's next for you as a voice actor? <laughs> go first this time. I'm not making the same mistake.、Um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's part of what I've already said. I guess the next step for me is to give back, not only、uh-huh. to my voiceover community. I'm also looking for ways to give back to people who are not as privileged as I am. Um, right. Recently, I've started working with a nonprofit organization.、Um, they basically build schools in the Philippines, and、um, I'm working with them. That's one of the things that I, it's just one of the things that I really want to do next. I really want to give back, whether it's for the VO community or for just、um, underprivileged people in general. That's definitely something that I that is next for me. So, yeah, absolutely, and.、Um... I think we're on the same page with that, and、mm-hmm. uh, definitely the VO community.、Um, yeah, like in in the immediate time frame that we have, like I said, ten thousand、mm-hmm. voice actors 
um, yeah. financially stable by 2025. I really, really hope for that to happen. And I think that'll have a ripple effect as well as you help these people. You you kind of equip them, enable them to be able to help others as well. So it's yes. kind of like a, a ripple effect and they're going to have their causes for whatever yes. that is. And yeah, I mentioned mine. I also have community and, um, and I'm going to continue serving in my church as well. Yeah, I mean, I love what you I love what you said about how the people we're helping they're also eventually gonna help people, because I'm about to get emotional here. Full circle <laughs> moment. Dave used to help me out a lot. He's wow. referred me to a lot of my projects. My first commercial that was Dave's referral. My first original cartoon that was Dave's that was Dave's referral too. So he, what he said is <laughs> really true. Um, you help people, and then they pay it forward. They help other people too. Yeah, yeah it's it's true. Uh, can I just really quickly? Uh, I did a voiceover project lately, and it was about the lion and the mouse. It's like a, a an Aesop's fable or something. And basically, the lion is like uh, there's a lion sleeping, and there's a mouse, and it you know um, accidentally tramples on the lion's nose and wakes it up and like oh I'm I'm gonna eat you now and like the <laughs> mouse is like no no please don't kill me and I'm like why should I do that because I can help you out sometime later on I promise I will help you somehow and the lion's like uh, nope. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that fine you, you can go and eventually. The lion is wandering in a forest and is steps on this trap and is caught in a net, right? And it's like, oh, let me out of here, let me out of here. And guess what? The mouse comes back, itsy bitsy mouse comes back and starts, you know, gnawing on that net and mm. releases the lion. And that was a, that was a project that, it was just kind of like a small project, but it made me cry as I recorded the voiceover for that. <laughs> That's such a great way of like explaining that to kids. The whole concept of, you know, um, just help people. Don't necessarily view them as competition. Right. Like, lift each other up instead. Help each other. Up. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 finishing line for that story was, "No kindness is ever wasted." Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's good. That's true. <laughs> Uh, what advice would you give to yourself when you were a newbie, if you could go back in time? Um, don't let anyone take your dream away from you. Oh. I'm gonna cry. No, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> this used to, this has always been my dream, but for most of it it was a pipe dream yes. so um and you know there are people who will say that it's not gonna happen or... but yeah oh i don't want to cry but like <laughs> it's, it's reality it's I'm reality <laughs> we're, we're at this point i mean we, we've got so much ahead of us still you know it's, it's nice to be at this point where we can kind of look back and have have something right. to look back at but definitely we're not saying like this is the end of our careers now. Yeah, Still got yeah. decades yeah. ahead of us. Yeah, right. For sure. Right. You know, but this is like the one question that always makes me emotional when they're like, what huh? did you say to your younger self? And, it's just, <laughs> and you know, the moment they say that, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry for asking. I just want to know. I just want to know. <laughs> How about you, Dave? I think I'd, seeing my younger self, who is not that much shorter than me because I'm not that taller compared to when I started <laughs> voice acting. I would like to say I would I would crouch a little bit maybe like and, and it tap him on the shoulder and say everything is gonna be fantastic. And that's just how I'm gonna say it. And uh I, I would like to just say fantastic because you know um you know you are gonna make mistakes along the way. You're gonna have regrets. Actually, you won't, <laughs> because at the end of the day, you don't have a destination. You're always becoming, becoming, becoming and growing. And if something goes wrong, you wouldn't I wouldn't be where I am if you are not going to make those mistakes. So go ahead and make them. 100%. Wow. OK. Thank you, guys. That was <laughs> that was really something. <laughs> like I was just listening to you guys. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Dave. For being here. 
Ah, yeah. It, it's, Thank you, Erwin. It, it's yeah. great to be here. I mean, I mean, it's great listening to you guys. I mean, like, yeah, some of it uh, I I know I I know some of your stories, but it's really great hearing it again, listen, listening uh, to you talk, and uh, yeah, it, it gives me a boost. <laughs> <laughs> it motivates yeah. me and uh, it inspires me. So yeah, thank you, thank you, Dave. Thank you, I, uh, Vanille. I feel friend. personally I attacked because I thought we were just gonna have a good time here. <laughs> we're having a good time. Nobody told me this was a recollection. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, thank you indeed for for joining us, Vanille and and Irwin as well for for joining us. Um, uh, we are all leaders in our own respect in, in the industry, and I really, really look forward to seeing you in your next big thing. And I know we'll continue to have collabs kind of like this one. Yeah, yeah. look forward to it. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Vanille. <laughs> you know what would be fun? We, we do like an online group hug, but not, not yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> no, because have you seen these, like, I think it's with Vogue? these interviews that Billie Eilish does. So every year she answers the same exact questions on a Vogue interview and they compare her previous answers. Oh. So we're going to do this again? It would be interesting. <laughs> Maybe we won't do it every year, but it would be interesting <laughs> to see how much has changed. After yeah, that. yeah, definitely. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Stay safe. Take care. Yeah. Happy voice acting. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.